Good morning, everybody. Welcome to C3 Church. I'm Pastor Matt, lead pastor here at C3 Church, and I'm so happy to be preaching this morning and that you've joined uh, with us. So glad that you're here. Amen. We are so thankful about what God is doing uh, at C3 Church, and, and I just know that it's a blessing to you. It's a huge blessing to me, and we pray that it's a mega blessing to you to be a part of C3 Church. And so welcome everybody online, those here in Ellsworth this morning. Amen. I'm Pastor Matt, lead pastor of C3 Church, and, and uh, just, just thankful to, to be together. So we've been in a series uh, that we've entitled Good News, and, and we've been talking about the reality that, that we need some good news and, and how that God's word is good news, and, and we need to believe that above and before anything else. There's a plenty of bad reports, plenty of false news, uh, plenty of stuff out there that Satan would love to grab your attention and, and fill you with instead of uh, God's word filling you. And so it's been my attempt in these uh, series is to, to convince us of good news and begin to believe that and then walk that out. And so this morning, I want to preach about that uh, very truth, and that is living the good news living the good news in my life personally. And I'm reading from Romans chapter 10, uh, 14 and 15. It says, but how can people call on him for help if they've not yet believed? And how can they believe in one they've not yet heard of? And how can they hear the message of life if there's no one there to proclaim it? And how can the message be proclaimed if messengers have yet to be sent? And that's why the scriptures say, how welcome is the arrival of those proclaiming the joyful news of peace and of good things to come. But not everyone welcomes the good news. And I, and I, wrote, I read this scripture and I'm like, there's a lack of people preaching the good news. And I know that we're, this is in context about literally preaching like I'm doing this morning, preaching the good news. But let's take it another layer and say there's, a lack of people that have responded to the call of Jesus and let their lives speak of the good news of Jesus. Amen. Man, we need that message going out and you embody that message of good news in your life. That's why it's so important this morning. We're dialed in and we're filled with good news and not the agenda of the world or the agenda of, of demonic forces, but we're filled with the good report of the Lord. Uh, and so I... This verse is a cry for good news spreaders and for people to really believe the good news. And I don't know about you, but I want to be that. I want to be a good news spreader. I want to be a person of good news and receiving the good news and then living the good news that God has for me out in my life. So this morning, I want to attempt through this word to challenge and invite us to open our hearts to faith-filled, good news living living out the good news, the agenda of heaven in your life personally. So it begs the question, what news, what report are we living on? What is the agenda that's motivating us? What is inside of us that's impacting us that is causing our outward manifestation of our beliefs? That's why this issue of Good news is so important that it resonates from the inside out of us and that we have it deeply implanted in our hearts because I think one of the most empowering aspects of being a human being, power that we have is the power of belief. It separates us from the rest, of the, the rest of the creation of the Lord is that we have the power to believe in what has not yet happened. We just don't operate on instinct or what we see, but but our attitude, our actions create, our, our belief system is, is something that creates. It's so powerful. And I, I hope that you see that this morning so that you can capture this idea of what I'm hearing and believing and acting out is such a important thing that we start from the beginning of hearing, right? Hearing God's word, hearing God's agenda, hearing God's plan for our life, and then acting that out. In fact, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 23 it just says to us the power of belief. Just a little belief is a game changer. And actually in Matthew, Jesus also that famous passage of scripture that talks about a mustard seed of faith 
can move mountains. What Jesus was saying was, belief is that powerful. It literally wasn't moving a mountain, but he was saying that your belief has power as if it could move a whole mountain. Think of that, that your belief has that much power. And so what we are believing, what we are hearing then is so important. It says, Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. So this morning, it is paramount that we receive God's word, God's good news, fill ourselves with that, and then live on that. (laughs) Live on that word. There are thousands of people who say they're Christian and that they believe, but The truth is, is they really don't believe because if they believe the good news, it would manifest itself in their life. It would manifest itself in the blessings of God being evident in their life. Listen to what Jesus said about that in Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, not just hears, but doers, that's living faith, not dead faith is hearing, not doing. This is living faith living the good news and does them, believes them, walks them out. I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock and the rains descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock of right believing and actions corresponding with that. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, winds blew, beat on that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And so many people will say, yeah, you know, I I believe in God. You know, I'm a Christian. But brothers and sisters, do they actually believe the good news and live it out in their life? And if you do, the Bible gives you this promise that you're going to build this life that is solid, that is fortified with the blessings and the truth of God. But there are many people who live way below that. They, They have no actions to back up what they believe. Listen to what Romans chapter 12 and verse two says, stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you. Let that sink into your hearing tonight, uh, this morning. Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you. That's it right there. So current, it's 2023. And that word right there written 2000 years ago is as ever pertinent to today and relevant today as anything you'll hear God's word says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the age or culture around you, but be transformed inwardly by the Holy Spirit. That's the good news. That's what is our motivation. That's what we plan inside of us through a total transformed by the Holy Spirit, through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Man, that, that is what I see. That's what I, I live for. That's what it, the, the Bible so boldly, to clearly de- declares right here is to stop. Everybody say stop. stop. <clears throat> With all the noise, all the confusion, everything that's out there. To, don't let that be the first in your heart, the first in your mind. That's exactly what demonic forces want to give, get you off right believing and get you off a lifestyle of good news. The Bible says, stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you, but get the good news, the real news, the transformative news by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of then how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life and satisfying and perfect in his eyes. You know, brothers and sisters, I think one of the saddest uh, passages, and there's numerous of them, scriptures in the Bible, is when people turned away and did not believe. They did not move into the promises of God. They did not move into heaven's agenda, and, and, and they stayed out of God's promised land. And unbelieving and believing wrongly will keep you out of more miracles and more blessings than you could ever imagine. Listen to this story, and this Bible story is put in the Bible for such a reason. It's profound, and it speaks so much to us. It's about the 12 spies that were sent out to to, uh, survey the promised land. Now, the question wasn't, 
go see a, you know, if maybe we could take it or if it's, you know, if it will work. They were, they weren't, they were just asked to go check it out because they knew it was theirs in their heart of hearts for generations. It was a promise of God that that was their land. But they went in the wrong attitude and the wrong spirit of unbelief. And they came back 10 out of the uh, 12 and said, listen to what they said in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. Oh, come on. How many want to shut off the bad reports that are going around? The bad reports about your life. Maybe the bad reports about your children uh, that the devil would plant in your heart. Or the, the bad reports about the blessings of God and your finance and your marriage or whatever your hand is finding to do. Your promotion at work or, or what you put your hand to do. Come on. The devil hates everything about us. And it's a, it's a, he sends out bad reports just like right here in the Bible. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. Bad news. <laughs> Come on. I want to be infected with the good news. I want to be infected with the promises of God. I want to be infected with the blessings of God over my life, over my children, over my grandchildren, over my attitude, over the way I think. Because that wrong thinking, that demonic thing of unbelief kept these people and their families out of the blessings of God. Think about that, brothers and sisters. This is huge, man. We've got to catch this this morning. They said, the land through which we have gone as spies in that land devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. So they elevated the bad and forgot about the promises. Brothers and sisters, let's not do this. Even though it can look challenging, even though there are difficulties, the word of God is true. And the promises of God are going to come through. And we're going to talk about this towards the end of this message here. But we've got to believe the report of the Lord so it doesn't keep us out of our promised land. Does not keep us out of what God has for us and what God has for C3 Church. I believe the best days of our lives. I believe the best days of C3 Church. They're here and they're in front of us. We're living in them out. We're living them out right now because we're hearing from heaven. Amen. I'm so excited uh, about Seek First Night. Coming up this Wednesday night, this place is going to be filled with people worshiping God, entering in. Why? Because we're living in the promises. We're acting it out. We're believing. We're taking, we're taking the God's word as truth and moving forward. Praise God. Join us. You'll be blessed. By the power of the Holy Spirit that will minister to you, infuse truth in you, infuse God's love, and infuse you the report of the Lord into your life. Mm, amen. And so unbelief overcame those 10 two said let's go and let's go now you know that's what i've seen in life there's more that are willing it's easy to be negative it's easy to just say well i don't know it's easy to second guess and i'm not talking about walking in wisdom where you're you know you're praying and praying through i'm not saying that i'm just saying when you know the promises of the Lord, but you refuse to act on them and you just, you know, you, you lean the direction of, well, you know, a, a negative nanny and, you know, I don't know and, 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 and negativity and, and the sky is falling and darkness and not building up like the Bible says and finding fault and finding problems and, and not believing the word of the Lord and let it sinking down into you so you can take new real estate in your family and in your life of the blessings of God. Mm, we see it right here, 10 out of two, uh, two out of the 12. And did you know that for 40 years, because they believed those 10, that anybody who believed them, they wandered for 40 years. Now that's something else. And I've always remarked about this, that man, God's really trying to make a point here. And I'm trying to make a point to us as modern day Christians and believers, man, unbelief and believing the wrong thing in the wrong report will keep you out of God's best and out of God's promised land. Amen. Amen. I want to go into the promised land. Yes. Amen. Separate yourself from the crowd that says, I don't know and won't, won't lean in. Get with those that will lean in. Even if it's a small number, say, hey, we're leaning in. We're believing God. We're trusting in the Lord. Amen. And so it's very important that we're not caught up in unbelief or wrong belief, if you will, but believing in the good news and then a life of good news. I'm living that out. 
First, first point here, we must believe the good news above all else. Amen. That's first and that's foremost. That, that is what is in my heart. That is what, in my, what is in my mind. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 19, a great strong word says, Beware, brothers and sisters, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. And encourage, exhort daily. That's daily. Come on, let's, it's a lifestyle of living and encouragement and exhorting one another in a good way. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin in this culture. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Just like we preached last week about that confidence. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as it is as it was in the rebellion in the wilderness. For who having heard rebelled indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? What was their sin? Unbelief. This is a serious thing with God whose corpses fell in the wilderness. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter rest but to those who did not obey so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Mm. Man, I want to believe the good news. I want to enter in and live it out in my life and in my family. Amen. So hear it. We must believe the good news. No matter what we're hearing out there, no matter the influence of the culture, whatever we see, no, we're going to believe the good news above all else. Number two. Living the good news, brothers and sisters, is a call to faith action. It's not, not just sitting around saying, yeah, no, no, we believe. That's what the Bible says is, is dead faith. Acting on the good news that we believe deeply. You know, I've seen Christians just wandering around with, with no mission, no goals, and no calling. And I want to ask them, what do you believe? Why aren't you action filled and doing the will of God in your life. God has so much more and is better than that. You were created for more than that. God created you to make a good news difference. <laughs> How can they hear without a preacher? You're the preacher. You're that minister every day in your life. How are people going to hear if you just sit around and are influenced by the wrong influences? Oh no. Living the good news is a call to faith-filled action as God inspires you and God fills your heart and God fills your mind. It's a tremendous thing uh, to be on mission with God. It gives you fulfillment in your life. I was remarking uh, this past Wednesday as the youth uh, uh, in the family life, excuse me, over in the admin building, they're, they're spilling out. And, and just before service, I had to cut away for a little bit. And I came back and as I was cutting away, uh, one of the ladies, Tambi, uh, who cooks all the food for the youth on Wednesday night. She uh, opened up the back of her car and in there was all this food. And, and I said, do you need some help? And she said, I could use a, a strong man right now. And I was like, well, wh where is he? <laughs> I guess I did accept it. And I grabbed that big roaster and, and carried it in. And, and, and just the joy it was to help Tammy, but to see Tammy so full of joy because she's living out the good news. She's just not sitting around and waiting for some, you know, bolt of lightning to hit her. No, she's rolled her sleeves up and she is actively living her faith out, making the difference in 50 and 60 young people on a weekly basis and staff that meets over there on a Wednesday night. What a blessing. What a, what a, she's living in her promised land, doing the will of God in her life and making a difference, man. Living the good news is a, is a call to faith-filled action. What is God calling you to? What does God want your life to, to make a difference and to, to touch someone else's lives? It, you know, the Bible says the world is screaming for people to preach the good news. Sometimes the good news is carrying a roaster full of, full of food, the person cooking all the food. That's the good news right then and right there. Come on, let's, let's get action filled with the kingdom of God. Let's get action filled with what God is calling us to do. And let's keep moving forward. We're not a church 
that just sits around and says, well, we, you know, we really believe in God, you know, but we have no money and this is falling apart and we don't have any ministry programming. That's not the report of the Lord. God says, when you begin to trust me and when you step out and when you start acting on the word of the Lord, God starts to move and God starts to bring people and God starts to, to fill the offering bucket so we can keep ministering and doing the ministry to many more people at a higher level. Come on, the Bible talks to us about living the good news as a, as a faith-filled call to action, acting on the good news that we deeply believe, not just wandering around, not believing, well, you know, does it really matter? Can I really make a difference? You can, and yes, it does matter. Amen. Amen. Living the good news is a call to faith-filled action. Number three, I am motivated a life that speaks the good news and preaches the good news is motivated by the promises of God and the good news. That's where we get our motivation from is the good news, the promises of God. This is what I focus on. This is what I'm active in in living faith. As someone sent me something the other day and said, aimless, unproductive Christians contradict the creative, purposeful, Purposeful, power, merciful God we love. Yes. Let me read that again. Aimless, unproductive Christians contradict the creative, purposeful, powerful, merciful God we love. That was Pastor John Piper who said that. So when we really believe, we're really motivated by the good news and the promises of God. That's our motivation. Our motivation is not something of an evil report or something out there that's not truth or half truth or whatever else. No, we're motivated by the promises of God's word. Our life is centered on this, is is grounded on this. Fourthly, this morning, stay the course. Stay in faith. Stay consistent. Don't be a person that jumps around or jumps out or, you know, but stay. That's that whole thing of learning and growing is, is staying the course and staying consistent in your calling and what God is calling you to do in living out the good news in your life. I, I remember the story in the Old Testament of Noah. How many remember Noah and the big boat, the big ark? And, you know, he was called to, to do this and he became a preacher of righteousness to people who didn't want to hear it. And yet he preached and built for 100 years. Think of that, 100 years and not a lot, a lot, a lot happening except him preparing and him building. He did this for a hundred years. And then after a hundred years, it began to rain and it had never rained up until that time. So his whole thing was a life of action filled with this news that God had given him. But when the rain came, he and his family were spared and they were in this ark because he stayed the course. He believed the report of the Lord. He didn't doubt. He didn't say, well, you know, I don't know. I, these people are picking on me and, and I don't know about all this. And we're tired of this. No, he stayed with it. He was diligent. He stayed the course for a hundred years. He stayed consistent. He stayed in faith uh, in what God had called him to on what the news that God was telling him. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, you know, that faith walk, it can be a grind and it can be a test, but, but stay in it. Stay believing God. Stay with it. It seems sometimes hard and an arduous journey, but I want you to know in the end, God is coming through. In the end, <laughs> what, what he's called you to, and, and that life of good news is going to come around. It's going to happen. You can have confidence like we preached last week about that. Stay the course and stay consistent uh, in your life. Stay faithful to what God has called you to. Stay faithful to the good news. Come on, church. Aren't you glad we're staying faithful? Aren't you glad we're staying zoned in and focused on the prize? Amen. The world is preaching doom and gloom and all this, but no, no, we're believing the word of the Lord. We're sticking with the word of God. We're sticking with believing. We're sticking with prayer. We're sticking with praise. We're, we're sticking with a committed life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And he is going to see us through and he is going to come through. Amen. Stay the course. Amen. Turn your neighbor and say that. Stay the course. Amen. Stay faithful. Amen. And lastly, this morning, the last point here is Get ready to be blessed. So let's go back to the beginning. We must believe the good news above all else. We must be living the good news, understanding it is a call to faith-filled action. Stay motivated by the good report of the Lord. 
even when the world's screaming others, stay motivated by the promises of God. Last, uh, fourthly, just stay that course, stay consistent. And then stay walking in faith, if you will. And then lastly, get ready to be blessed. Amen. Get ready to be blessed. I mean, that's like the uh, a motivation that keeps us going. Yes. That, that God's blessings. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord just, are, just keep blessing us, but there's no sorrow that comes with it. The blessings of the Lord make one rich, it says. A deep, deep, satisfying life. So get ready to be blessed as you live out the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of his word, the good news that God has a future for you, the good news that God is with you, the good news that God is going to fill you with power, that God is going to sustain you, that God is going to help you when you need help, that God is is right there with you and that he is going to bless your life and help you in ways that you can never imagine. He's going to do things through you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to bring the dreams that he puts inside of you into reality. He's going to bless the work of your hands. He goes with you. Amen. As you stand with me this morning. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for being here and hearing the word of God. I'm just praying right now encouragement into you as we've went through this good news series. I believe it's been a game changer for many people. And I believe the Lord has spoken to us through the word the last number of weeks here, the last four weeks. And it's been a a huge lift in your faith. It's been a, a huge encouragement. And my prayer is that as you leave church this morning, that your faith is anchored in Jesus, that your life begins to take on greater meaning. And you see that God is with you in every area, the cracked parts, the good parts, every area, God is with you. He goes with you. And we're going to, we are going to tune out the lies of the enemy. We're going to tune out distractions. We're going to tune out unbelief and we're going to hear from heaven. We're going to hear from the word of God. We're going to have the people around us that, that breathe life into us. And we're going to journey this faith walk together. Amen. And God is going to bless. God is going to bless. Amen. Man, I love you. The Lord loves you. Amen. We are in this together. Amen. God is doing great things. Service pastor is coming at this time to, to conclude the rest of this service. God bless you this morning. Amen. So thankful for good news. Is anybody going to have the courage after that to go out and be the living example, the action-packed, filled Christian to the world around us? Amen. I believe that we have been fully equipped in this morning to do exactly that and to not live in condemnation or darkness, but the promise of God to us is yes and amen, that he is with us and he is for us and he is showing us the way and he is our firm foundation that we can build our lives on. Would you just lift your hands and receive that word from the Lord today? God, we thank you that you are the firm foundation. Lord, we thank you that when everything around us is falling, we are not. Lord, we thank you for the confidence of your word that fills us today. And Lord, I pray that each of us would be filled to overflowing with the courage, Lord, to be the action behind the word. Lord, that our faith would be put into action today as we bless those around us. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We are safe in you, Lord. You are our firm foundation. Someone receive that. Yes, we thank you for the confidence of your word that is building us up right now, God. We are leaving this place changed. We are leaving this place different. We refuse to to believe the bad news. We choose to believe the report of the Lord that I am healed, that I am saved, that I will prosper, that my children will prosper, that my family will be blessed. We choose, we choose to build our lives on that foundation today, God.
Our team is going to come and sing this song. And I just encourage you to let this ring out as your anthem of praise. Thank you, Jesus. put in my heart. And I want to tell you all here at our Ellsworth campus, God has put so much in our hearts for what he is going to do at this campus in this location. The dream has not stopped. It's old, but it's not stopped. And so thank you so much for being here and being faithful and being a part and for being able to catch the vision of what God is doing. We are so excited about what's happening with our youth group. On Wednesday nights, we're going to be switching places because they are growing and busting out at the seams. 
And you and I both know that we need to pour into this generation because they are what is going to take the word of God and the legacy that God has built and the dreams that he has built. It is on the shoulders of our youth group right now. And so we want to pour into them. And so I don't know why I chose to tell you this today, but I want you to know the dream of our pavilion in the back is not dead. So if that is something that God is speaking to you to link arms with us and help us finance, we want to get that done. It would be amazing if it could be done for GPY conference. Probably not going to happen this year, but you never know. We are, we're not done dreaming. We want to be able to pour into that and make this campus a place that young people want to hang out, that families want to hang out. God is good. And so leave this place excited about the vision of C3, but the vision that God has put in your heart, it is not dead. Maybe dormant, but it's not dead. Put your hands together right there. Someone's vision is being awakened right now today. Yes. We thank you, God, for that because he has given us hope. He has given us hope. It is so good to have been together. Thank you for being here. If you have not connected with us yet, we would love to connect with you. And so take a minute to fill out a connect card at our guest service table. And one other thing, if you want to know what's happening at C3 Church, you want to get connected to our Text Remind app. And the easiest way to do that, pull out your phone, send a text message to the number 94000, and you can text new C3, and you will be opted in for all the details that happen within our church family. So we hope that you will do that, and we look forward to connecting with you. Now, it's time to go make a difference. And have some coffee and enjoy some fellowship. God bless your day.